everyone. Welcome to Aloha Friday with the Sandwich Island Social Network. My name is Kamako Brown and uh, welcome to the Aloha Friday show. It is a series of interesting, fun conversations, sharing the lives and journey of people in our island community, wherever they may be. The Sandwich Island Social Network is a nonprofit organization serving Hawaiians and Hawaiians at heart away from their island home. And we gratefully accept tax deductible donations to support the work we do in the community. And you can go to, as you see at the bottom of your screen, to sandislands.org. And you can find out all about what we do here in the community here in Southern California. We want to remind our friends watching our Facebook live broadcast of the Aloha Friday show uh, is a live interactive chat driven show. So we welcome your comments and questions throughout our video podcast. We would love to hear from you. And so, uh, by the way, it is Girls' Day. Happy Hina Matsure. <sighs> it is uh, in Japan uh, a wish for health and prosperity for uh, their uh, young girls. And um, it definitely is uh, something that back home in Hawaii, they get Boys' Day and they get Girls' Day. And uh, March the 3rd is Girls' Day. So uh, what a great way to celebrate Girls' Day by having uh, a wonderful guest. And uh, we've been friends uh, for, oh, about 10 minutes. And we've been having a good time talking starting before the show. So please welcome to the Aloha Friday show, Laurie Matsukawa. Welcome, Laurie. <laughs> Hey, Kamaka, how are you doing? I am doing very well. Happy Girls' Day. Thank you. I'm so glad you noticed. Absolutely. That was very nice. When you was growing up at home, did your parents uh, have the dolls out for Happy Girls' Day? Your mother put that out uh, at all or no? No, my my parents did not have the dolls because, you know, we came from a kind of poor family. Okay. But... Every girl's day, we got that Tomoe Ame candy, you know, yes. the one that you eat the paper on the outside yes. and it had a little toy in the top. Mm -hmm. So every girl's day, my sisters and I, we got Tomoe Ame candy for sure. Uh -huh. You guys, um, you go get some mochi. You also have to have some mochi as part of girls' day too, right? That's, well, yeah, but you know, that's kind of, again, fancy stuff. So oh, we okay. had mochi at New Year's and we had Tomoe Ame on girls' day. <laughs> <laughs> and my poor dad, you know, he we didn't he didn't have any sons. He only had three girls. Oh. So on Boys' Day, we gave him Tomoyami candy I... because he was the only guy in the house. <laughs> He's supposed to get arare too, right? The, the kakimuchi. He's supposed to get the yeah, crunchy. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes too, right? Sometimes. Yeah, I uh... wonder if we. I don't think we ever gave him kakimuchi. Oh. <laughs> oh, because because you was brought up in our air. Um, and, uh, right. Okay. But originally, okay. Originally yeah. I was a young girl in Wahewa. Oh, so Wahewa. I lived in Wahewa until I was like in fourth grade and then mm. we moved to Aea. So my okay. formative years were like Aea, but when I was a kid, little kid, it was Wahewa. Ah, so it was fun. Okay. It was fun growing up in the country. Yeah. You know, I'm a North, to the I, big town. I am. Yeah. I, well, let me tell you, I'm a North Shore boy, right? Brought up in uh, Sunset Waimea Bay, right? And so for us, going to town was going to Dots in Wahiwa to have dinner. Dots. Yes, that's, Dots. That's, <laughs> that's, Do they still have Dots? I think, uh, I think they it, just it kind sold. of transitioned. Yeah, right, it's, they transition it, to something else. It's now called Mango Grill, and it's owned by uh, some yes. folks that I met. Andy Bumatai and I uh, were doing some shows over there um, okay. 2022 okay. and stuff, you know. But yeah, but Dots was our uptown hall. Oh, we went to Dots, um, and you can at the end they bring you your choice of either Jello or chocolate pudding. Yes, you come with a tray. Okay, here's your dessert. That's What's right. Your, what? Yeah, and then <laughs> salad comes standard, and always yes. have that. Thousand, that tropical dressing, right? Yes. That tropical oh. red, oh. that kind of red. Oh, really good tropical That's dressing. Good. And another good place my parents used to take me to was called Seoul Inn, like Seoul, Korea. Uh -huh. And that was my favorite Korean restaurant just right there in Wahewa. Right. And, and then a bakery, great. was it Sunshine Bakery with the custard pies? Uh, I think it was Sunshine. It was a really good bakery, yeah. Yeah, because my dad loved custard pie, so we'd always go over there and grab custard pie to take home, you know, over there. And in, huh. and in those days, Scotty's Hamburgers, Scotty's Drive-In, the burgers oh. were 25 cents. Remember? 25-cent <laughs> hamburgers and like 15 cents for French fries. Right. 
Right. So that's how old I am. I'm so old, but <laughs> you yeah, listen. It's good to reminisce. You and I are in the same ballpark right over here. Um, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm a, a 47 baby man, so we're right in there. We're right in there. <laughs> um, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you gra- you you grad. What high school did you grad from, Laurie? Okay, I a high school okay. class of '74. Okay. And when I was in high school, the strangest thing happened. I was in this. Uh, wonderful choir run by Mrs. Edwina Sue called the IEA Swinging Singers. Our choir <laughs> class performed in Waikiki. We were up there. You know, we were like a performing school choir. That's and big so time, yeah. We, it was big time. And it was <laughs> I really credit Mrs. Sue and the IEA Swinging Singers for helping me be comfortable in front of people and on stage because when you have to perform, right, you got to perform. Yeah. So I was in the combo. I played ukulele and then Aww. I did Maori poi ball dance. Okay, <laughs> that was my my contribution. <laughs> and we would travel. Our choir went to the mainland and we went to outer islands. And then we our big trip was to the, the Asia. We went to Japan, Philippines, New Zealand, Australia. We were like, Big okay, dogs wait. back then in high school. What, what grade? What grade was this? What, what on that you're doing this travel? This is my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. So really? Years. And so uh, we had some really notable people come from IAS swinging singers. You know O'Brien, the late O'Brien Eselu. Yes. He became a, a kumu. Why? Uh, he was in the choir with us. Lyle Soberano, his was kind of like his mentor. Uh, Carlton Damaso, who also goes by Hoku on the Big Island, and Sonia wow. Mendez. Sonia Mendez. Sonia Mendez. In- yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, it was a terrific experience, and it was wonderful to see you know our classmates from Iea go on into the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. it was a great experience. So, that taught me the poi ball dance. So then uh, when I was looking, for, I was going to go to college, right? I'm thinking, oh, I need money. I applied for, you know, what, where do I find money to go to college? A friend of mine said, hey, you should enter this contest. It's called <laughs> Miss Teenage America. Uh-huh. And, you know, if you win, you get a $10,000 scholarship. I said, Ooh. wow, that's a lot of money. I said, <laughs> but I'd never been in a contest before. And then he said, the best part is there's no swimming suit competition, so you might even have a chance. <laughs> I'm like, okay, thanks. Laurie, so let's it, let's it, take a look at this. Let's take this. This is um, okay. your story, which is great. Let's take a look at this this video clip over here, uh, and um, uh, we'll tell we'll, we'll talk story right after this. Okay. okay. Here, here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> Good evening, an Olympia man. Cat- 35 years ago, an unexpected experience launched the broadcasting career of news anchor Lori Matsukawa. Police in Ferndale tonight are talking to... The- Ask her about the life-changing event today. That's yeah, stupid. And she just might do a little dance. Days gone by. Oh. Flashback to 1974, senior year at Aia High in Hawaii. 17-year-old Lori plans to study music and become a piano teacher. I was looking around for money for college, and a friend of mine said, hey, if you enter this Miss Teenage America pageant, you could win a college scholarship. Plus, they don't have a bathing suit competition, so you might even have a chance. Lori wins the local pageant and heads to Fort Worth, Texas. The Miss Teenage America pageant. To join 43 other girls representing cities nationwide. Lori Matsukawa, Honolulu, Hawaii. Also competing for the $10,000 scholarship is a student from Rainier Beach High School. Karen Rain, Seattle, Washington. Karen and Lori remain friends today, reunited by Miss Teenage America. That was one of the fun things about the pageant was learning a dance routine. Mm-hmm. Like you're, um, you know, on Broadway, you know, and they said, all right, everybody do this and do that. Yes, yes. And, uh, ring those bells. The images from the live telecast may be grainy, but not the memories. So let's start with the first presentation. Lori vividly remembers the talent portion of the pageant. 
instead of playing the piano like other contestants, she dares to do something different. The Maori Po the Maori Poi Ball Dance. And long ago, the Maoris were known to be very fierce warriors. So that's eventually what I selected as my talent, was the Maori Poi Ball Dance, because I figured, who's gonna do that? Nobody. And I was right. <laughs> So here's the thing. All week long, we're practicing for the pageant. I do the poi balls, no problem. The night of the pageant, in front of millions of viewers, the poi balls collide and stop. And I'm like, uh-oh. Despite the bobble, Lori advances to the final round of the pageant. Now, nobody expects her to get this far, not Lori or her parents. My parents at the time thought, what are the chances that she's going to win? So they decided, oh, we're not going to go because it's too far. So when they would do cutaways of the, can you know, the candidate and the parents, it was hilarious because they'd show me and they'd pan to my chaperone, and she's this Caucasian woman with the blonde, you know, beehive. Even when the judges narrow the four finalists down to two, Lori still can't imagine winning. No. No, it never crossed my mind. You know, at the when there were just the two of us, I was remember standing there thinking, okay, now when they announce my name as first runner-up, I'm gonna jump over and give her a big hug. Our first alternate is Miss Janet Danes from Love and Utah. So that's why when they announced her name as first runner-up, I went, my mouth drops open, my eyes bug out because I didn't expect it. The mouth never closed. And here's when um, we went to the Kentucky Derby. I rode in these big parades and got to meet Colonel Sanders and got to meet, you know, Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees. Oh, here, this is the only picture I have of me and Sonny Bono. Wow, it's the first time I've seen that picture. But after being Miss Teenage America, I mean, you travel to every city. You're interviewed by newspaper reporters, radio, television reporters. I began to think, hey, this is a job I could do. Definitely a job she could do. After using her scholarship money to get a degree from Stanford University, Lori worked her way up to the anchor chair, sitting pretty today, all because of a pageant and a poi ball dance she'll never forget. So, and then you just kind of hope it, it stays going until you end the dance. <laughs> ah, yes, Lori Monsacower. If you want to see more of her dance, you can. You can go to Evening Extras. Go to kingfive.com. Click on over. <laughs> so, so I'm connecting now. I'm connecting when you're with, um, uh, you know, uh, AI High School. Uh, yeah, swinging Singers, right? Swinging Singers. You did the poi ball. Now you're using that skill that propelled you right through the Miss Teenage America 1974. And there you go. Who'd have thunk it? Who would have thought? And and uh, until that time, I was going to be a piano teacher. Seriously. And then uh, after you get interviewed, you go, hey, I can do this job too. And it was a terrific uh, way to uh, explore the world, meet all kinds of people, and always stay on top of the news, right? Yeah. I mean, it was real important for women back then to not be bubble heads, you know? That was yeah. like the, the early 80s, right? You got to show that women can, can hold jobs like that. And even back then, there weren't that many women on television mm -hmm. or in journalism in general. And so, and certainly not women of color, Asian American journalists. So. Yeah. Once I started in the field, then, um, hey, let's get together as journalists and promote journalists. You know, Beautiful. back then it was only Barbara Tanabe, uh, Connie Chung, and Wendy Takuda. So Wendy Takuda was from Seattle. So there were like maybe three, right, Asian yeah. American women. And Ken Kashiwahara was, was the one guy who was on TV back yeah. then. So, so, we, so we have some friends that are popping in here. Yeah, uh, so here's Auntie K. Bennett saying aloha on Aloha Friday. We have quite a few Friday. comments coming in. Let me catch up over here. Oh, we have uh, Kahi Ao. She is part of our Sandwich Island Social Network Ohana. Kahi Ao says happy Aloha Friday. And uh, let's see. Oh, 
uh, Nancy Lewis from Anaheim. Aloha and happy Friday. Aloha, Nancy. Nice to have you on our uh, podcast uh, this uh, afternoon. And here is Pu'uvai. Pu'uvai uh, might be working in San Diego today. She's going, I love the story. So inspiring. Pu'uvai is part of our Sandwich Islands uh, Ohana as well. And... Uh, uh, yes, Kahiao says that's a fantastic story. They're just loving that, um, Laurie. And uh, what's, what's yeah, shocking is some some people in Hawaii even remember. And this was fifty years ago, right, Kamaka? Fifty yeah. years ago, they go, "Hey, weren't you that Miss Teenage?" You know, <laughs> and I'm like. Wow, people have really long memories around now, here. Kahi Ao is a hula dancer with the Aloha Hula Studio in Granada Hills. And so she's very much familiar where, you know, they, they sometimes teach the keiki and sometimes when they do the, you know, Maori, New Zealand uh, dances and stuff. So she goes, poi balls take skill, Auntie Laurie, she says. She says, uh, <laughs> That's true. you know, she goes, uh, take skill. She goes, chee hoo, you got mad skills. <laughs> What's funny oh. is that I actually made my own poi balls because oh. back then they they taught us how to make poi balls for May Day oh, okay. in elementary school. So I made my own poi balls. Yeah. We recorded our own music. I was in the choir, right? So I got all my friends, hey, let's record my music, you know? And so it was like so amateur, right? We're just kids. We're just doing our thing. But, you know, it, it opened up this world. And then, boy, I was able to say, let's go. And once I was there, I said, okay, let's bring in more, you know, people of color, more women. Let's let's go. Let's promote it. And so most of my life has just been being there, just, just being on TV. What my hope was, oh, other people will say, hey, if she can do it, I can do it too. So There's Casey Nakatani yeah. from Seattle saying, aloha. Hana <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. Um, and uh, we have quite a few popping in over here. They all want to uh, give their say their aloha here uh, as well. So that that you know, my goodness. So you're out of Stanford, and so what's the next step for you now? You're what's Okay, so I had to get a job, right? So after that, um, and, oh, and then during summers when I was at Stanford, I would come back home and I would work at the advertiser. Back then it was just the Honolulu advertiser. And that's where I met some a lot of journalists who are, we're still keeping in touch even today, like Rick Kwan, he's on Channel 4, I think, and people from the press, so like um, Greg Yamamoto, retired photographer, Sandy Oshiro, Andy Yamaguchi, all of these people from Hawaii, who I met as an intern at the advertiser. We're wow. still in touch. Wow, wow. And and recently I met Grace Lee and kind of like the new generation. Mm -hmm. The Grace Lees of the world are benefiting from Asian American journalists. Yeah. Through the decades, Asian American journalists, 40 years old now, they have been able to kind of in, interest people in the industry, bring them up, give them scholarships, go to college, stay in college, and then mentor these youngsters so that the Grace Lees of the world can, you know, find their spot in the industry. Yeah. yeah it's terrific. Here's Kai Ao. She goes, Auntie Laurie, would you say that you approach the competition as a beauty contestant? No, because I, I had never had an experience in a beauty contest, right? This was the first thing. I was just in it for the scholarship, frankly. And so I didn't think of it that way. And, and that's why I didn't think I was going to win because in a beauty contest, you know, it's the blonde, <laughs> blue-eyed person, right, who gets the prize. But so I was just there for the ride. I thought it was going to be fun. Yeah. And it was. It was great fun. There's Kay Bennett says she actually saw that TV show. She goes, I saw you win. She goes, uh, uh, she actually saw the show. <laughs> right? So everybody was shocked. And my parents weren't there. They didn't even come to the pageant because they go, oh, they go, Texas, man, that's really far. You know, back I mean, then Las Vegas was far. And now, oh my God, Texas. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. When they do the cutaway, they show this blonde wahini over there. Uh, the, <laughs> my, the chaperone. My, Chef <laughs> and Ellie and I were friends for the, our whole lives. You know, and she eventually moved up here to Seattle area. Yeah, so yeah, now, Laurie, you have won two Northwest Regional Emmy Awards, 
2017, your series Prisoner in Their Own Land is about the incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II. And then the following year, 2018, another one about a photographer's mission to photograph uh, Nisei veterans who served as part of America's greatest generation, Shane Sato, Portraits of Courage. Um, it seems a theme here, recognition of uh, uh, Japanese Americans and a recognition of uh, what happened to them um, through the war years over here. That mm -hmm. That's uh, stayed with you. W were your parents uh, at all involved with um, the incarceration um, during uh, the war years? No, my parents, my parents were too young to okay, be your part grandparents. of the war effort. I think Okay, but my uh, grandparents, my dad's parents were on a plantation in Kauai. And so they were, they stayed there because they were part of the war effort, right? So if you worked at the plantation, you didn't get sent to a camp and uh, you could volunteer for the uh, first battalion, right, from Hawaii. You could volunteer for the first battalion, but you you weren't incarcerated like all the dudes here on the West Coast U.S. mainland, right? West Coast mainland, 120,000 of them were sent to camp. In Hawaii, they're just discovering and, and documenting now that there were small camps yeah. on all the islands, right? Mm -hmm. Hono Uli Uli is the big one on Oahu. Mm -hmm. But my grandfather, I found out, was put in a camp on Kauai up in, um, oh, where was it? It was... Not in Waimea, where he was from, but he was he went to a small camp. And uh, he was there for a few months, and then they let him go because he was sick or something like that. But um, So that was the only incarceration experience we had on my dad's side. My mom's side, they ran a dairy, right? Diamond Head Dairy in Honolulu. Oh. So they were part of the war effort. They were producing milk. So they didn't get in, interned into a camp they didn't uh have to even be drafted my uncles they had to stay and work on the farm they had gasoline for their trucks wow. so that's how important they were to the war effort so we were luckily uh, not in, incarcerated like the people on the mainland were mm -hmm. T but tell us about got to tell the story of the the vets, right? Yeah, all so, these so guys from Hawaii went first battalion. Tell us and, about Shane Sato um, and uh, his experience over here, as well as um, uh, for for okay. both of these productions. Shane Sato is a photographer. He lives in um, L.A., but his mission was to go document all of these vets. So he went to Honolulu to photograph some vets, and he went to Seattle. He went all there and took pictures of these vets and they wore their uniforms and they could most of them could still fit in their uniforms their original uniforms or he had them pick uniforms similar to the ones they wore during sure. the war wow and uh you know that you cannot say enough about the 442 first battalion mis guys they are medal of honor worthy and many of them do have medals of honor like senator dan right senator dan inoue has a Medal of Honor. Uh, Nakamura, there's a courthouse named after him here in Seattle. He got a Medal of Honor. Okubo, he was a medic. He got Medal of Honor. So there are many Medal of Honor, honor honorees uh, from this battalion, from this regimental combat team. And their story was just not told at the time. So part of my being a journalist was telling that story. Because, Beautiful. Oh, it, it's something that I have to do for history, if anything else. Sure. You yeah. know, you don't do something like that to, to win an award. You do it because you want to document it for the future. And yeah. what can we learn from this kind of heroism, right? Uh, interestingly enough, um, uh, this uh, Sali Atisanoi lives in Japan. He is saying, how's it, my brother, long time no see. Now, Sali, uh, Sali Atisanoi is a Konoshiki. He is uh, the uh, sumo wrestler yes. from uh, yes. uh, Nanakuli Wainai side. He now lives in Japan for uh, more than 30 years. Aloha, Sali. Uh, I know he's been traveling. He was in Okinawa. And last time we talked, he was in Okinawa. Uh, nice to have you uh, jump in over there, Sali. Love to you and uh, the wife and to you all, Ohana, over there in Japan, brother. <laughs> I'm so glad that there are some people from Japan tuning in too, because um, the, part of my later life then is I started volunteering on the board of the Japanese Cultural Center here because, uh -huh. again, locally, because of the war, it was um, 
shameful. You know, when these guys came out of camp, they were uh, ashamed of being Japanese, right? Because people thought they were the enemy. Let's lock them up. Uh, let's not hire them. Let's not give them a place to live. They're the enemy. And so this generation really had a hard time after the war. And so they kind of hid their Japanese culture and the language and everything like that. So um, in the last few decades, in the last 20 plus years, we've been working to kind of celebrate the culture at our Japanese Cultural Center, which is a 100 plus year old Japanese language school. And it welcomes all people who love things Japanese, but especially who want to study Japanese language. So this is our Japanese language school and cultural center and museum and a place where people can come together and, and meet people from Japan and Japanese people can meet people from America. And it's like a little United Nations, you know, Sweet. running out of this hundred year old building. Wow. So it's, nice. it's kind of building up pride yeah, in the culture. Yeah. Uh, Kahi Al was commenting that she is a World War II buff, and um, she works uh, with the uh, um, Veterans Administration here in Southern California. That's um, mm -hmm. that's what uh, Kahi Al does, um, working with veterans. But she says, I'm bewildered by the experience that Japanese Americans um, uh, experienced, you know, through, through those war years. And she says the 442nd is the most decorated group of soldiers uh, in World War II. They're an amazing, yep. an amazing uh, uh, group here. And... Um, um, also, Charles Kupa, who is saying mahalo for bringing the beauty of our culture to the forefront. Um, mm -hmm. Nice to have you join us here, um, Charles, as well. And um, yeah, there is C. Honda, another good friend of ours. C. Honda, he lives here in Southern California. She's saying aloha, kamaka, and Lori, how's it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of our, uh, Ohana is uh, uh, wanting to be part of our conversation over here. And uh, Saliva says, Aloha, my brother. Sali, always, always nice to have you join us. You got to come back on the show. Our, our door is always open. Sali has some interesting stories, too, about, uh, you know, how he arrived in Japan with just a few dollars in his pocket, knew nothing about sumo wrestling one, but he wanted to be a sumo wrestler. And his journey of a non-Japanese uh, coming in, you know, of course, there were other older uh, uh, sumo wrestlers from Hawaii that were mentoring him, but uh, his journey is interesting too. And that is Konoshiki Saliva Atisa Noi that's uh, with us today. Mm -hmm. And uh, Casey uh, Nakatani says, do you still go back to the islands? Can you still pe speak pigeon? <laughs> I can when I go back. I do, but I, you know, this is, this is on the mainland now, so I have to speak <laughs> proper English. But here's the, here's the thing is it's so funny. There's so many Hawaiians living here in the Seattle area, the whole West coast. Right. And there are so many halal and everything like that. So I try to keep in touch. One of the stories I did was about a local halal who went to the Mary Monarch festival about three years ago. And so it was, it's a great way to um, expose the people here to our Hawaiian culture and, you know, the customs and the hula and the, you know, all of that wonderful culture. And my husband, you met him briefly, Larry. Larry is the one that was actually a musician in a halal here. Oh, nice. He played, he played Tahitian drums and, you know, bass guitar and ukulele for a halal. Uh -huh. And everybody says, oh, Lori, it's because you're from Hawaii. I said, no, it's because my husband is a musician. <laughs> and he likes to play toede. And so he learned how to play uh -huh. toede from these Tahitian guys cool. from San yeah. Francisco. I mean, it was just this wonderful mix of cultures. So our son then thinks he's Hawaiian. Said, no, you're not ethnically Hawaiian. Uh, well, son, Hawaiian is Japanese, heart, you know? right? Yeah. But you know, says, oh. uh, we do have some mutual friends, uh, Bill and Gloria. Uh, uh, Bill and Gloria. Um, yes. What's their last name? Uh, Nahia? Uh, Nahalea. 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 Also, Stephen mm -hmm. Gomes is a buddy of mine um, yeah. as well. Uh, Brother when Gomes. I go up, they call him Brother Gomes. Yeah. Brother Gomes. When I go up there, uh, he always invites me on his radio show. Um, and my cousin uh, was the founder of the uh, Live Aloha Festival there that they had yes. every. That was um, Angela Pedersen. Uh, that's my cousin. Yes. And um, we have, um, you know, uh, cross paths with quite a few people up there in that area. Uh, mm -hmm. too. So uh, uh, Kahi Ao says, Auntie Lori, 
Do you ever do speaking engagements? And if so, how do we follow you on your socials? Oh, um, I'm on Facebook. So send me a send me a friend request. Okay. And I'll look for your name, Marie. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. 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 You mentioned Gloria Nahalea and Bill. Gloria was the halal way back that Larry played for. Got it. And of so course, Larry I, knows Gloria from the halal. Got it. And I, I've been up to the Kalama Heritage Festival up there. Um, That's right. Uh, I was up there when they had the Makaha Sons and uh, learned all about Kalama, the history of John Kalama. You know, I was like, wow. And at that particular festival that I was at, they had the two uh, Kalama sisters that were there. They have since passed away. They were half Hawaiian and half Native American Indians. Um, and uh, what a fascinating journey that was uh, up there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In my career, that's a, that's another story I did about Hawaiians in the Pacific Northwest because they, they there's a bunch of Hawaiians that settled Salt Spring Island on Vancouver Island in Canada. And then I profiled the Kalama family because I said, oh, Kalama, that sounds Hawaiian to me. <laughs> they call it Kalama. Kalama. <laughs> like calamity. <laughs> Kalama. Calamity. <laughs> yeah. But it's Kalama. <laughs> and so, again... I'm always trying to throw whatever cultural knowledge I can share. I'm trying to throw it into the, the news. And thankfully, the station, King, you know, it was very open to kind of airing these kind of stories. Because nice. they knew, uh, hey, you know, that's, that's the purpose of hiring diverse journalists is that they bring diverse stories, right? Yeah. Casey Nakatani uh, talks about two friends of mine as well. Kermit Apio is a, a great comic and a great slacky player. And Neil Chin, uh, what an amazing ukulele player and teacher. Yes. Uh, I believe Neil is from Maui. And uh, we had uh, Neil on our, our radio show um, and playing his music as well uh, back in the yeah. day. But... Uh, yeah, so uh, Kahiao says, I've already sent Auntie Lori uh, a friend request. She's on friend it, that request, Kahiao. Okay. <laughs> she is on it. You know, uh, Lori, yeah. you, you talked about the Japanese Cultural Community Center of, Was uh, of uh, Washington mm -hmm. um, and a co-founder of that. How did that all start? Um, man, that, that's, it's in, it's in uh, Washington State. And you said it's in this building that's over 100 years old and has amazing yes. history. Right. So what can I expect when I go there to, to walk through the Cultural Community Center there? Okay, it is a fantastic place. It is over 100 years old. It was initially built in 1913 wow. by uh, these, you know, immigrants, Issei immigrants. And uh, it was their gathering place and Japanese language school. And back in the day, there were thousands, like 1,500 to 2,000 students who would come to the Japanese language school after English school, right? Mm -hmm. After American school, they go to Japanese school to learn Japanese. Um, and then the war came, boom, it became unpopular to do anything Japanese. The army kind of took over the building. After the war, all these Japanese that had been interned in these incarceration camps started coming back to Seattle. Nobody would hire them. Nobody would give them an apartment to live in. So they began to live in the lang Japanese language school. The wow. classrooms became their apartments. And some of them lived there for years. And the last person left like in 1957. So that's almost 1960 before they finally left. The last person left the Japanese school. Wow. So we, we started saying, oh, let's bring back this Japanese school. And about 23, 20 years ago, we said, let's officially, you know, organize and become a Japanese cultural center. So we do a lot of things. We have a museum. We collect community treasures. We have classes, judo, karate, taiko drums. Uh, we're going to have a tea ceremony class soon. And then we have celebrations like we're gonna have we have our hina matsuri dolls set up so people can come in take pictures today um, but we also have children's day which is well, boys day children's day cel celebration we have culture day we have summer camp for kids nice and most of our students japanese language students are adults so that's really cool and during covid oh they couldn't come to the center we had to do it online it turned out to be so good for the Japanese school because more people could participate. You know, people who don't live near the, near the building could still come to Japanese class, yeah. even though they lived in Tacoma or they live in Bellingham 
or they even lived in, you know, Las Vegas, they could still come and take lessons online. Beautiful. So it's, Beautiful. it's just yeah. a really good resource. And the good thing is there's people there who remind me of your aunties and uncles, right? They, these, <laughs> these old guys who come and help volunteer, they clean the yard, they mop the floors, you know, and they still speak Japanese. And, you know, it's just wonderful, wonderful. Well, if you just joined us, we we're talking to Lori Matsukawa and uh, a, uh, a local girl that um, sprang from uh, uh, yeah, uh well, first from Waihua, got to give Waihua their yeah. due, and then, <laughs> and, then uh, yeah, uh, and has since made her home for uh, many years. Uh, after 40 years in the industry, um, she uh, left um, uh, K King TV. And uh, we're going to be talking more about it. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I, we have some pictures that you've shared with us about your, your travels, uh, Fukushima and an uh, earthquake and uh, uh, meeting uh, with uh, uh, dignitaries and a picture with um, uh, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, and tell us some stories about that. That should be interesting. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back after these messages.
And we're back. Welcome back to the Aloha Friday video podcast with the Sandwich Island Social Network. And, uh, uh, you know, Olena Hugh, who is going to be our guest next week, is also a uh, anchor and TV reporter in Honolulu and is uh, quite, she is quite a um, interesting uh uh, guests that we're going to have just as you are, Laurie. And so we look forward to Elena next week. Um, you sent us some wonderful pictures, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't share some of these and you can talk story about behind it, uh, share uh, what's going on here. And here is uh, this one. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, wow. that was uh, my first my first ever Emmy. And here's the, here's the sad thing is that I was in the business for 40 years and this was my very first regional Emmy in my 30, you know, in my 39th year in the business. So uh -huh. it was so amazing and so wonderful that I finally got an <laughs> Emmy. And this was for a series I did about incarceration, all these people who went to camps, came back and what happened to them? How were they treated when they came back? Wow. How did they get redress? And finally, how is the younger generation retelling the story of incarceration and we featured some young artists you know Amazing. spoken word artists musicians dancers and so that was a really fun fun time my yeah. very first emmy when i was a an old lady oh oh george takei oh one of the uh things we do every year with the cultural center is we honor people who help elevate and uh, strengthen the u.s japan you know relationship and so yeah. george takei was one of our recipients so he he came to seattle and spoke and accepted his award and we were so thrilled that that happened when, when i saw that picture i have to say oh my okay oh that's my <laughs> right. He's so oh okay and this one uh one of the things i did was in 2000 17, I went back to the Fukushima area to talk about what the recovery looked like you know, six years after the Fukushima triple disaster is what they call it. Earthquake, tidal wave, radiation leak, right? And this is what they do with the the dirt, the radioactive dirt I, in Fukushima. I, I, they scrape it up, they put it in these big plastic bags and they uh -huh. stack it up like in the fields or behind the Buddhist temple or you know on the side of the road. And I said, well, what are you gonna do with all this dirt? And they said, oh, eventually they're gonna put it inside the old Fukushima plant, which is still huh. radioactive and kind of bury it in there. Well, everybody but knows if you- then, uh, you know, uh, Laurie, everybody knows if you ziplock something in one plastic bag, it's going to be okay. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. And I don't think I was supposed to have been there, but when you're a journalist, you got to go where the story is, right? Uh, okay, this was earlier in Kobe. Um, Kobe is a city that also was kind of destroyed by an earthquake uh, way back, the original Kobe earthquake. Wow. And um, this was, uh, I went to do a story about how they, uh, rebuilt their whole city so it could survive the next time. A lot of it is in their um, the structures underneath their buildings. Some of their buildings are on like rollers mm -hmm. so that if there's a big earthquake, the building will roll instead of crumble. Wow. So they did a lot of things in Kobe to make it like earthquake sustainable, I guess. Okay. So there was something that you were one of only seven people from the U.S. that went to this very, very special occasion in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about that. This was a very special occasion. Now, this particular picture is with the former, the late Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. This was when he was visiting Honolulu because he and President Obama took a tour of Pearl Harbor. This was in 2000, I want to say 2015 very end of Obama's term. And they took a tour of Pearl Harbor and it was to really solidify the idea that the US and Japan have reconciled after World War II, okay? And so it was such a thrill to meet Shinzo Abe. That close, I mean, it was almost like, I, I told his assistant, oh, can you take our picture? Gives him my camera. It was like, <laughs> I can't believe I'm standing next to Shinzo Abe asking wow. this guy, 
I was originally going to take a selfie, and then the, the assistant said, "No, no, no, I'll take." Ah, so nice. it was so cute. Nice. And then uh, in 2019, the emperor, the previous emperor, kind of stepped down, and his son, the current emperor,、uh, ascended the throne. So we were invited. One of seven America. I was one of seven Americans invited to the enthronement, and here's kind of our group. Visiting the、uh, U.S. ambassador's residence. Here's some of our group outside the、um, the、uh, palace, and the gal making the peace sign is Christine. She is from Hawaii, of course. I was surprised <laughs> she didn't do the shaka sign. And、um, we were just so honored to be representing the United States at. The enthronement at the palace, and we got、wow. to like actually dine. Okay, here's a here's a picture of Elaine Chao. She represented the U.S. government. She was then Secretary of Transportation, right under the、um, Trump administration. And so here we are at this reception for the enthronement,、uh, thrown by Shinzo Abe, and it was a fabulous, you know, beautiful dinner, and、wow. they had. Hundreds of waiters, kind of in their tuxedos, you know, flashing through this huge ballroom, serving all seven hundred of the guests. There, it was kind of a magical event. It was a magical、wow. five days, magical <laughs> five days. And Norm Mineta, our former transportation secretary, and hey, former mayor of San Jose. You said you flew into his airport, right? That's right. The San Jose airport is named after him. Yeah. That's yeah, right. So this、yeah. is Normanetta of Normanetta Airport in San Jose,、wow. and he、uh, was there for the enthronement too. Wow! Good times. Just a real decent fellow, and he only recently passed away. Yeah. Yay! And this is one of the perks of being a journalist. When a, <laughs> at this time, when the vice president comes to town, you get to take a picture with him. So、yeah. uh, I got to interview. Uh, Joe Biden, when he was here for the cancer moonshot, this was in the very last years of the Obama administration.、Huh? And here's a quick, quick story. Okay, so at the time, our former Washington governor Gary Locke、uh, was the ambassador to China under the Obama administration. So Joe Biden knows Gary and his wife Mona, and I'm a good friend of Mona's. In fact, I got I I introduced Mona and Gary right at this. At this little at our friend's house, so、um, when I was talking to Joe Biden, I said, "Oh, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I introduced Mona and Gary." And he laughs and he says, "You know what? Gary and I married up,、oh. you know, because he, <laughs> he really, you know, he really, you know, was in was in close touch with his staff and with all the administrative people, and of course, his ambassador to China. He was in touch with Gary and." Wow! It was just kind of fun to see the vice president, now、yeah. president, as a normal guy. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh! This was just、uh, last year, 2022. This is、um, the ambassador of Japan, Koji Tomita, giving me an award. It's called、um, Rising Sun with Gold and Silver Rays. It's for, you know, gener, you know, increasing.、Um, And supporting good relations between the United States and Japan, and I think、beautiful. a lot of this is because of the Cultural Center.、Right? Yeah, beautiful. Here's a real quick funny story.、Uh, the late Pat Morita、uh, loved to come to Hawaii. You know, from from Karate Kid and from、uh, mm-hmm. uh, Arnold's and so forth. He loved to come and play mountain ball with、um, all of the you know the the, the Japanese league in, in the Makali area. They have a softball, and so he he、mm-hmm. was part of that whole thing. And so he tells a real quick story, which he said he was on vacation. His agent calls him from L.A. and says,、uh, "There's a comic that's supposed to perform for a, a, a convention at the Hilton Hawaiian Village.、Um, the guy got sick. Since you're there already, we don't have to fly somebody in. Would you be willing to take the gig?" So Pat says, "Yes, I'll take it. No problem. I'm here on vacation. I can learn some money on top of that. Sure." So he goes. He goes. I was in a rush to go there. I got there. I contacted the lady. I'm standing on the side in the wings over here, and I say to the gal, "I said, oh, by the way." Um, this is a convention. She goes, yes. He goes, and what is this convention? He goes, this is a reunion of the Pearl Harbor survivors. Oh, ouch! <laughs> and so, and so, it took him a second to realize that. And as he's processing this, the MC goes, and ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our stage Pat Marina. And he goes, he goes, Kamaka. He goes, I walk out there and I could hear a pin. The place was packed to the gill. 
he walk out there on the stage and he could hear a pin drop. Nobody makes a sound. And he looks up and he says, um, before I start, I just want to say one thing. Um, sorry about Pearl Harbor. And there's this quiet and there, there's some giggles and there's some laughter. And then there's a round of applause and people stood up and gave him a standing ovation. He said the place was just roaring. He said, I had the best set of my life there. He wow. said, but it was, it was, I was teetering on the end. I thought this was my end of life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? Oh my God, that is right? a nightmare. Oh my right? gosh. But, but he said, I'm always so recognize the elephant in the room. He said, uh, you know, yes. and uh, he said, I went right for it as well, you know. Uh, ah, we have some of our friends that want to share some things oh. real quick. Uh, okay, um, wait, 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 wait. Before, before we do that, I want to do just a real quick shout out to yeah. Lonnie Kauhini Haas who is uh, a member of the Hawaiian Kauai Club here in Seattle. Uh -huh. She introduced me to Nathan Aveao, who's a singer from Honolulu. I know Lonnie. And, uh, I know Lonnie, yeah. You know Lonnie? Okay, yeah. so Lonnie yeah. says, oh, can you take my friend uh, Nathan Aveao golfing? Because I know you golf. <laughs> so I got to golf with Nathan Aveao, which is like this holy, holy smoke. I can't believe I'm doing this. What a celebrity, you know. And he is another nice guy. I mean, uh, yeah. incredible golfer, too. Don't yeah. Don't bet against him. He's, a, he's, a <laughs> he's an amazing bass golfer. player. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah. When he yeah, he, he not only does Hawaiian, but he's also a jazz bass player, and he can just he can just shred on that bass there. Well, he's amazing. Kaisen Nakatani says, "Can you speak Japanese or dance obon?" Ooh. Uh, I I studied some Japanese after college. But I didn't go to Japanese school when I was a kid because I had to go to hula school. Ah. Right? My mom ah. said, oh, okay, you want to go to Japanese school or hula dance school? I said, oh, hula dance school. <laughs> and, it, you know, when you think about poi balls, right, it worked out for it, me. It okay. worked out. Here's then, Glenn. Yeah. Glenn takes, yeah. says, uh, Gibby oh. takes taiko at Japanese language school. There's that connection See? right there. <laughs> Glenn is a local is a local artist, and uh, I know Glenn and his wife are. So thanks, thanks for, for watching. Yeah, Glenn. thanks for dropping in. Here's a uh, here's our my talent coordinator, Glenn Jones, uh, Nate Jones. Good to see you again, Laurie. Mahalo for coming on the show, telling all these great stories. Right on, brother Nate. Nate is my production assistant and talent coordinator. Does a great job and makes it all happen here. So, uh, and he yeah, also and Nate worked for Larry at Northwest Cable News. Right. So it's a small <laughs> world. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, Honda says in Hawaii, my father said that that when the war hit Hawaii, all the Japanese schools were closed and the priests that taught were taken away um, uh, yeah. during those years too. That's right. um, there were, it, yeah, there. If they, if they were de if they were Japanese, Japanese, they were deported, and then, uh, or they were put into these little camps that were on all the islands. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah. my grandpa. And uh, uh, Casey wants to know: Did you go to Hiroshima and Nagasaki as well when you were there? Uh, did not go to Nagasaki, but we did go to Hiroshima um, separately mm. on a, a personal trip. Uh -huh. And it was amazing because there are ties, Seattle ties to Hiroshima there as well. One of the first people who went back after the bombing to build houses is a dude named Floyd Schmo, who mm. was uh, who taught forestry studies at the University of Washington. And he took a diverse group of people to Hiroshima to rebuild houses. And he's like an icon in Hiroshima. Wow, wow, wow. wow. So Seattle connection there. Yeah. Um, here is, uh, we call her Auntie Jerry. She's saying, Aloha, cousin. This is my cousin. She's an amazing, an amazing musician, has a beautiful voice. And so uh, she's checking in. She's a Laia girl from North Shore, living here in oh. Southern California. Auntie Jerry. Aloha cousin so Kamaka, uh, if you ever come and visit me I, I i'm not a really good cook but i can make uh like plate lunch food for you like ooh, i can, can make, make bento you can make on bento box then you can make on bento or some i can so, make musubi, spam musubi. Uh -huh. i can make chicken teriyaki wings i can ooh. make some sukiyaki right make a little mm. side of sukiyaki mm -hmm. this new year's i actually made maki sushi and you know <laughs> the whole nine yards yeah so it was quite I was quite like shocked. I could I could do all that stuff. Okay, you make proud. Come from come from island. You still can make your maki sushi. Spam. You can you can yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, locals. We love talking food, and so uh, yeah. Um, and when I come to Seattle, uh, and, and there's let me see. There was um, uh, 
uh, one, I don't know if they're still there in, in the Seattle area. Bobby's Hawaiian Food. I don't know if they're still there. I know they had two locations. Uh, and, but and I when I used to come up, I used to always go hang out with those guys. I don't know if they're still around, but yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned Pat Morita and uh, the Karate Kid. You know, one of the stars of Karate Kid, Yuji Okumoto, lives yes. in Seattle, and what he has a restaurant. Yeah, it's not, it's not right? Kawaii. Well, what is it called? Oh, Ohana. It's I think it's Ohana Kitchen. Kitchen. Ohana, Ohana Kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, we've been there. I've been there. Uh, in fact, um, mm -hmm. my cousin, uh, Angela Pedersen, like I said, is a founder of uh, uh, Live Aloha, took us all over there. We had a great time um, at that yep. restaurant as well. Oh, my goodness. So Yuji is, yeah, he's, he, there's all these connections. <laughs> can't get away. Uh, my goodness, look at the time. We, I can't yeah. believe an hour has gone by already. Um, and Glenn said, yes, Bobby's still in Linwood. There we go. That's, that was good Hawaiian food over Thanks, there, Bobby. Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Uh, and um, there's a Kauai family and Kona Kitchen. Look at Casey. They know where all the local spots are, man. That's uh, UG's restaurant. Kona Kitchen is UG's restaurant. Okay. And, uh, yeah, Kauai family has been there a long time. And that's yeah. where all the musicians go. They, they eat after their show. And they play, and it's a real Kanikapila scene there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sweet, so sweet. My goodness, um, we can continue to talk story. You know, please, um, the door to our Holly at the Samaritan Island Social Network Aloha Friday show is always open. I know you have more stories to share, Laurie. Let's. Um, uh, I've got. Uh, uh, I think we've just touched the just the, the tip of the iceberg of some of your journeys over here. You must get some amazing travel stories and things that have happened and uh, people that you've met as well. And we love to hear that. In fact, um, uh, you met Sonny Bono and Mickey Dolans and, uh, you know, uh, all of these folks in your travels and stuff. And that's all amazing for a, a local girl um, coming all those days, too. It's amazing. That's the thing. <laughs> The girl from Aea, what a shock, right? Who would have thought? Uh, here's Kahi Ao saying mahalo, Auntie Laurie, for talking story with us. Please come back. <laughs> yes, indeed. We have to tell more stories. Uh, we love we love the Hawaiian style. We say mo'olelo, and those are uh, those are stories. Uh, the mo'olelo yeah. will be here. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, we, um, Thanks, Kamata. Thanks for having me. We're going to have uh, Laurie go right to our virtual uh, uh our virtual green room. Uh, hang on, Laurie. I'll be right with you. And uh, leave some, at least leave some sushi over there on the platter over there in the green room, okay? <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Apple Friday show. My goodness, that was, that was fun. That was fun, you guys. We appreciate uh, you coming along with us on our journey here at the Aloha Friday Show. We are here every uh, Friday with uh, interesting guests, island people, island hearts, and all of it comes as a uh, means but for us to keep our island community connected no matter where uh, they are on our global aina. And uh, so mahalo to everyone over here. Um, we have all of our friends uh, saying their aloha as uh, we say mahalo to all of you for being with us. Folks, have a blessed day. We'll see you next time on the Aloha Friday Show with the Sandwich Island Social Network. Aloha no.